How many of you have been in the Chilpo Beach? Anybody be in the Chilpo Beach? How many of you were in the ocean for the first time in Pohang? For the first time. You know, I took the people uh, like this. And there are many people, they experienced the real ocean for the first time in their life. So I took them and then I asked them, okay, close your eyes. Do not open until I say open. So I took them to the Chilpo Beach. And they are the one, you know. For the first time, you're really into the ocean. Do you think they like it? <laughs> they enjoy it. They love so much. So this is my prayer today. You know, you heard about Christianity. You heard about God. But my question is, do you really experience it? The love of God. Have you been in the ocean, the divine ocean called Jesus? If you never, you better experience first. You experience first and then you decide. Many people, they never experience. They just heard about it. They just know about it. And they make the decision. But this today, if you never experienced the love of God, you cannot make the decision yet. You have to be in the ocean of Jesus. And then you decide, you like or not. I'm sure everybody will like the ocean Jesus. Amen? Let us pray. I'm going to pray. Father, we are here. To experience your ocean, the love in Jesus Christ, Lord. Reveal to us, show us your love, Lord, in this story, Lord. So we can grasp, we can experience, we can feel, we can sense your love, Lord. Bless your children, bless your sons and daughters here. Even though they don't know you, Lord, even though they don't experience about your love, Lord. Help them to experience your love while they are staying in the city of Pohang. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can turn the light on. Luke chapter 15. Okay, there was a man who had two sons. Okay, this story I'm going to share with you today is not about children or son's story. It's about father's story. The man who had how many sons? Two. I have two sons. And I have two daughters. I don't know about this man. This man has a two sons. And the son, the older one and the younger one. And today the Bible said, the younger one said to his father, the younger son, so I call his name, let's say, Young son, Korean name, young son. <laughs> Any, anybody young son here? <laughs> okay, young son Kim. His name is young son Kim. And older brother, I guess, old son. <laughs> so young son came to his father. Father, give me my share of the estate. I cannot wait. I cannot wait until you die. I want to have my estate today. I cannot wait. I want to have mine today, right now. I'm not going to wait because I'm old enough. I think I know enough about business. I think I can handle better than you handle. I don't trust you. I want to take care of my business. This is mine. You said you're going to give me, so why don't you give me now? I'm not going to wait because I cannot trust you anymore. And I think I can do a better job. I think I'm old enough. When is the first time you feel like you feel you're old enough? You know, when I was 12, I thought I was old enough. So, I thought myself, 12, you know, I, I used to go to church when I was 9 because my cousin invited me because church was the only place 
I can get free candy, 1970. But when I turned age 12, wait a minute. I'm not a kid anymore. I don't need candy anymore. No way. I think I'm old enough. I know the life enough to make the decision. What if I was brainwashed in the church? I, mean, I used to sing Christmas carol. I used to hear about the Jesus story. Yeah, I like it. And I have many friends in the church. But what if everything I know about is not real? I have to make sure it is real. But the thing is, if I stay inside of church, I don't know if this is true or not. So I might have to go out to check this is real or not. Because I'm old enough. As age 12, I was about to graduate elementary school. So the last Christmas as an elementary school student, I remember on the way from church or in the bus. I didn't know that was my prayer, but I, I talked to God. God, leave me alone. I had fun with you. Thank you for the candy. But I think I'm old enough. Leave me alone. This is my life. Give my share of my estate. Give my life back. I want to check out. I want to see my life is real or not. I want to see you are real God or not. What if you are not real? I want to check out first. If you are real, I might come back. What if you are not real? I'm glad I left. And I said goodbye. God, leave me alone. Guess what happened? Like today's Bible. When the young son asked his father, give me my share of my estate. You know what that did? What? You're young. What are you talking about? Go back to work. No, he didn't say. He didn't argue. Okay, son. Here is yours. Take it. When I said to God, leave me alone. Give me my freedom. Nothing happened. No thunder. No lightning. Nothing happened. I didn't go to church. Nothing happened. Middle school, I never went to church. Nothing happened. I have a good time with my friend. Oh, first week, I feel a little bit guilty. Second week, a little bit better. One month, oh, nothing happened. Everything is okay. One year, oh, this is real life. After three years, wait a minute. This is not enough. I need more than this. Like younger son, he got what he want. And then not long after that, the Bible said, not long after that, the younger son, young son got all together his possession. And the Bible said he set up for a distant country. So I decide I cannot be satisfied here. I want to go a little bit far. So high school, I remember junior High school, you know what? Now, I think I'm an atheist. So in junior high, I remember we had a like, class, classmate. We had a like, uh, we made decide, we, uh, we made a decision to make the book, you know, book published. So, uh, classmate, everybody, okay, why don't you write something? And people ask, what are you gonna write? Okay, I'm gonna write something. Okay, what are you gonna write? I'm gonna write about God. Really? Yes, I have something to write. So I wrote a letter, the letter to God. Dear God, here are the three reasons you are not real God. You are not real God. Number one, you cannot be a God. You are Christian God. You are not real God. Number one, you know why? Because I'm an Asian. I don't believe Western religion. Why do I have to believe Western religion as an Asian guy? I'm proud of myself as a Korean. Why do I have to believe the religion from the West? Okay, number two. What about my good ancestor and good people? Just because they don't believe you, suddenly they go to hell? What kind of God is this? I don't believe you. And third, you are very selfish. Just because I don't believe you, okay, you are asking me to believe Jesus, then I go to heaven? If I believe Buddha, or Mohammed, or other religion, suddenly I go to hell? 
you want me to choose between heaven and hell? And I said, I want to stay in the middle. I don't want to choose Jesus. Neither I don't want to choose other God. You know what? Leave me alone. I'm an atheist. I don't want to believe anything, okay? Why you suddenly make me, you know, this, you know, the choice. Suddenly I have to make the decision. No, you, you come to condemn me. You come to condemn people. I didn't know about the truth. Three old question. I'm sure you know the answer some. I didn't know about the Bible. I thought Christian religion is from the West, which I did not know the real history. The Christianity was not from the West, was from the East. I didn't know about this. And second, about the good people. Ancestor, I found the answer from the Romans chapter 10. Who are you talking about? We are just clay. You think you know everything? You don't know, but I feel like I know everything. God, you don't know, so let me help you. And third one, I didn't know about this middle ground. I thought we are all standing in the middle ground. Nobody is standing in the middle ground. God did not send his son, Jesus, to condemn, but to save. I thought, I'm here. If I believe Jesus, I saved. If I don't believe, I go here. So I thought, okay, I'll just stay in the middle. But the thing is, in the Bible, everybody is not here. Everybody is here, already perishing. Before Jesus come, we are all perishing. We are all under the wrath of God, which I didn't know that. Whether you are what, what kind of atheist or doesn't matter who you are. We are all here and God loved you so much and he sent his son. He came to us to save us and he's opening the door and stretched out his hand. Come. I want to, I want to save you. I don't want you to perish. Come. But I didn't know about this. Anyhow, I went far, a little bit atheist, but that was not enough. I want to go a little bit far more. So freshmen in the college, whenever I see Christian, are you Christian? Come with me. Let's go get drunk. I made them drunk. Oh, you're not a real Christian. There's no God. You say there's a God? There's no God. If there's a God, no way. So I went far and far. Like this young son. Young son, he left his father's house for the first time. And for the first time, he enjoyed the wild living. What is the wild living? Wild living. Wild. What is wild means? In wild living, wild, uncontrolled. You don't have to control yourself. You just do whatever you want. You don't have to think about. You just follow your nature. Listen your voice from your heart. Do whatever you want. It's okay. So in wild living, he squandered everything he had. He destroyed his life. I went far away, a little bit far and far. You know, I remember one time I was sitting in the church because my mom became Christian first. And later, my dad became Christian. When my dad became a Christian, they forced me to come to church. But I said to myself, no, I'm an atheist. Why do I have to believe? I have freedom not to believe. But my mom asked me, please, for the peace of the house, if you just sit one hour, you have whole week freedom. Okay, just one hour sitting, and then my whole week freedom, not bad. My mom asked me, please, just come and sit. You don't have to even believe. You just sit. That's all I want. Okay, I'll do it. So I, I remember I was sitting the, in the church, the seat. You know, the good thing about this church was there was a pillar. So I always sat behind the pillar. Because I don't want to be persuaded by this preacher. I feel like if I hear, I'm going to be brainwashed. So I try to not listen. 
not see. So I sat. But one Sunday, another guy was sitting there like me. <laughs> so I had to sit in the middle. So I start drawing pastor's face. I look at him. I pretend this, I'm listening, but I draw his face. And one day, I couldn't really sit. My mom said, just one hour. But I feel like one hour, that's too much. I'm deceiving myself. I'm a human being. Even I can't stand. Even I can just sit even one minute. So finally, no way. I'm a human being. I'm not going to sit like this. I don't believe. Then why I have to sit here? I'm not a Christian. Then why I have to sit here? Any of you here sitting like me? I'm sorry. You don't have a choice. <laughs> That time, I had a choice. You know what? I'm not going to sit. Even my mom asked. So in the middle of someone, I stood up. And then I can see that my dad was turning his head and look at me. I look at his eyes and I know what it means. But in my heart, no way. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to stay here because I don't believe. So I stood, I stood and walked away. I didn't go home that day because I know I was so scared what's going to happen. And I proclaimed myself, now, not just atheist. Now, I'm an anti-Christian. You know what? I don't like this Christian. I do not like, I don't understand. You know, this is not real God. If this is real God, why they force me? I don't believe. So I strongly against that. I got drunk, you know, in the college. The more I got drunk, I feel like more empty in my heart. You know, I remember one time, I threw the bottle. I was drinking the things I supposed not drink. And threw the bottle to the sky. And I screamed, God! I thought myself was an atheist. But I screamed, God. Wait a minute, where's God? God, you are not there. If God is not there, I don't know why I screamed. God, you are not there. You're not real God. But the louder I screamed, the louder I can hear from my heart. God was there. I cannot deny myself. I cannot be sound. So that's why I drank every day. Because I don't want to think about God. The more I try to forget about Him, I couldn't handle this. I could hear loud and loud, loud sound. You know, Blaise Pascal, Uh, quote, he said, if you think uh, you are atheist, do not stay in the middle. Go far. Be a strong atheist. Go far and far. Then you will see God. That was me. The more I deny God is not there, the more I can see God was there. And I spent, squandered my life. Finally, I couldn't find the meaning of my life. And this son, young son, he spent everything. He wanted to do everything, so he did everything. Guess what happened? After he spent everything, in the Bible said, there was a severe famine in that whole country. Not just some area, whole country. Do you know what happened when the economic crisis hit the country? Do you know who are the first ones going to suffer from this economic crisis? Especially if something happened in Korea, Do you know who's going to be the first one to suffer? Foreigners. Foreigners. Young son was a foreigner in that country, whole country. Economic crisis hit this country, and nobody has you know, the good job. And he was the first one had to suffer from this economic crisis. So, for the first time, he began to be in need. He never experienced being in need. He always had enough food, things to do because he was with his father and now he spent everything. Now he was in need. So, question. When was the first time 
you feel in need. Maybe right now, economic crisis or some kind of like a severe famine is going to hit the place around you. So you can realize you are in need. When you have everything, you never come to God. But when the things happen, you know that you are in need. You don't want to come back to God, but you don't have any place to go. That is what happened to me. I didn't want to go back to God. I didn't want to come back to Christianity. No, that is not the place I want to go back. No way. I want to try everything possible, not Jesus, not church. And I left. But finally, I came to the point in the military service. I came to the place. There was nothing I can hold. Even my family, even my friend, nobody was there. And there's only one place I can go. But I didn't want to go. But I was in need, desperately. Like this young son. He spent all, and then he was in need. Do you know what he did? When he was in need, he went out and he hired himself to a citizen of that country. And who sent him to the, his field to feed pigs. You know, in his culture, feed pigs, walking with pigs? No way. That's too dirty. No way. We can't think about this. I'm not going to do. But this kind of situation, young son had no choice because he was too desperate. Okay, I'll take this job. Have you ever taken a job? You have to work. You don't want to work because you have to survive. You have to pay the bill. To survive, you have to work. But that money was not enough. Young son worked all day. But he was longing to feed himself with pot that pig was eating. Think about, you know, what kind of food pig, pig was eating. You know, pig? Oing, oing, oing. And young son was hungry. Oh, he was looking. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little bit. And then, and then this pig, oing, oing, this is mine. Come on. What kind of situation is this? And he thought about, what am I doing here? And that was the first time. The Bible said, for the first time, he came to sense. He came to sense that, wait a minute, what am I doing? I remember my fathers. How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? Here I am starving to death. Young son, for the first time, realized his reality. When is the first time you realize about your reality? You think you know about yourself? You think you know about you where? Really, do you know about you where? No, you don't know about yourself. You maybe don't want to see the reality about yourself. But when young son hit this situation, Finally, he came to sense what I'm doing here. He saw the reality. And for the first time, he remembered his dad. I remember my father. I remember my father's household. My father had many servants. They even have enough food to spare. Here I am starving to death. And then he made a decision. You know what? I'm going to set out, and I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm going to say to my father, Father, I sinned against heaven and against you. I, I don't want to be called your son anymore. Make me like one of, high, one of your hired servants. Then the good thing about this young son, you can think about your reality many times, and then you don't do anything. But young son, he made a decision, and he made action. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back. So he got up and he went to his father. When was the time for me to realize my situation? I don't know about you. When was the first time you realized 
your spiritual reality in front of God, not in front of people. In front of God, I realized my spiritual reality in the military. I was broken totally. I saw myself helpless. I saw myself spiritually poor. I saw myself in need. And one Sunday, guess what? This time, nobody forced me to come to church. But this Sunday was coming Sunday. You know, I used to go every Sunday, you know, in the Korean military service, you have to go to the, some religious uh, the ceremony. So I used to go on Sunday, Buddhist temple. The reason why uh, was because Buddhist temple, they give big, big lunch. <laughs> so I used to go Buddhist, Buddhist temple, but this time I was so desperate. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to church this Sunday. So for the first time in my life, since I left, I made a decision. I'm going to come. I'm going to come to church. And I came that Sunday. I couldn't hear the sermon. I couldn't sing the song because I was crying all the times. I didn't know about anything, but I just knew that somebody was waiting for me. And I didn't know Jesus personally that time. And this time, I wanted to know. I don't want to leave him alone, but I don't know him. I want to know him, but I don't know him. And somebody said, you know, to know Jesus, you have to read the Bible. Okay, this time, I'll try to read the Bible. Like young son, he came back. He made a decision. He decided to come back to father. But still, when he was far away, long way up, his father saw young son. And his father was filled with compassion. And he ran to him and he embraced. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. You know the good thing about our God? God is not going to just wait in heaven. Okay, you come. You made a mistake, you come. No, that's not the God we serve. God loves you so much. And he came to you. He ran to you. When he sees that, you are broken. He's right there. The Christian God, you don't have to find. Because he came to you right there in front of you. I'm here. I love you so much, guys. That's why I came. And I didn't know about this. And that time, I want to know Jesus this time. But I don't know Jesus. How can I know Jesus? So I tried to read the Bible. So in the church, there is a program, a Bible reading. Whole Bible reading, four months, September to December. So I just, okay, I'm going to read the whole Bible. So I started. In two months, do you know how many chapters I read? I start with Matthew. In two months, I was still chapter one, Matthew. <laughs> what is the Bible? I don't understand. What is this language? I don't, know. I don't have any knowledge about the Bible. And I, I complain. God, I try to get to know you this time. If I don't know you this time, now it's not my fault. It's your fault because I try my best. And actually in the military, I only have free time. That time, only 10 minutes a day. That was my only time, free time. I couldn't read the Bible. But after one week, I got an accident. And I broke my arm. And they put me in the hospital. And suddenly I got six weeks free <laughs> from military duty. And God seems like speaking to my heart. You said you don't have time? <laughs> Why don't you use this time? So the good thing about military, they wake you up in the 6. You have to get up 6. And until 10 p.m. Nothing. There's nothing I can do. Even they bring the food to me. So from 6 to 10, what I did, I read the Bible. But this time, I failed. Somebody was with me. Holy Spirit was with me. I read Genesis one day, and I couldn't go back to sleep because I want to know what's next. I want to know what's next. I couldn't sleep. Less than six weeks, I read the whole Bible. And I knew. I can knew that. I can sense that. And I came back. You know, young son, he came back all the way around. Finally, he experienced the love of his father. You know, we just 
you know, watch the, the video. The thing, thing is, thing is about, you know, you may experience many things in your life. But what if you never experienced the love of your father? You can experience Pohang. You can experience South Korea. I, I know I, I met one exchange student last year. Why did you choose Korea? And she said, because it's far away. There are many universities you can go. Why Korea? Because it's far away. Okay? And she said, there are many several options in Korea, several universities. Then I said, why Pohang? Why Handong? And she said, because even in Korea, it's far away. <laughs> far east. And far east, Pohang. Okay. You experienced Korea. How do you like it? How many of you like Korea? You better you like. How many of you like Pohang? Oh, maybe you never experienced Pohang yet. You know, this is the thing. You experienced, you come to Pohang, Korea, to experience. You want to experience many things. But what if you never experienced the love of Father? Do you know the sad thing about this story today? We didn't read about this story. The old son, old brother, old son, he was in his father's house for the rest of his life. He was in the father's house. All the time. But until the last story, he never experienced father's love. Just because you are in Christian university, just because you were raised in Christian family, just because you are pastor's kid, missionary kid, that doesn't mean you experienced the love of God. At least, young son, he experienced but sadly, oh son, he never experienced. And he's complaining why dad is so happy with this. The one who spent all father's money with a prostitute. He didn't know about the love. That's the sad thing. We can sing the Christian song. We can study in the Christian university. You think you know about Christianity? You think you know about Christian and God? But you don't know at all about the love of God because you never experienced. That's very sad. You came from Christian country, Christian background, your family, but you never experienced the love of God. That's very sad. You are here in this school one semester, but you never experienced. That's very sad. God loves you so much. But if you don't experience, you may experience so many things in this world, but you, you don't experience the most important thing in your life. God loves you so much. Maybe you don't feel it. You don't sense it. Whether you feel it or not, He loves you so much. I know from my heart how much He loves you because He loved me so much. And I can sense that, you know, that's the reason I like to hang out with you guys. You know, whenever I see you guys, especially if you're not a Christian, I love you so much, guys. Because I want you to experience the love of God through me. Because I was like you. I didn't like Christianity. I want you to experience. Do not condemn. Do not say I don't like Christianity. Do not say I don't, I don't believe until you really experience how much you know I have son I have four children and my the last one he is five years old and he loves me so much and we play together and I said Mimi do you love me how much do you love me and he, he used his little finger he said he tried to play with me he makes small finger and he said this much. Come on, better than this. Then how much do you love your brother? And he said a little bit. Okay, I love brother this much. How about sister? He said, this much. How about mommy? This much. 
And I said, do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much God loves you? How much? God showed how much He loves you on the cross. Look at my hand. This is how much I love you. Even you don't believe me, even you don't come to me, I'm going to die for you. Even you don't worship me, I will die for you so you can be forgiven. That's not all. I'm going to rise from the dead so you can have abundant life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. How much? So much. So much how? You cannot imagine. You cannot think about when you never experienced. You are so happy with the little tiny thing you experienced. Oh, so good here. It's so fun. Is this real fun? That's not the real fun. You experienced real fun, real love in Christ Jesus. So my prayer for you, you never experienced the love of God. Or even you say you are Christian, but you never experienced. Maybe you, you forgot about the love of God. You don't really enjoy. You don't have joy. God loves you so much. And the, you know, the, the last story about this is celebration. For the first time, they began to celebrate. The old son, he never celebrated with the father together. It was just work. But when the young son came back, finally, for the first time, he celebrated with his father together. I'm really happy being with my father. I really enjoy being with my father. Do you celebrate? Do you really enjoy? Or you just do because you have to do. God doesn't want to do if you don't want to do that. For the first time, young son celebrate with his father when he came back. But sadly, the old son, he never celebrate with his father. My prayer to you, celebrate with your heavenly father. Let us pray. Father, we come because you came first. You loved us first, Lord. You, you showed the way so we can come to you, Lord. Lord, we can do many things in our lives, Lord. We can go many places. We can meet many people. We can do many things, Lord. We can experience so many things in this world, Lord. But what if we don't experience you, Lord? Lord, bless your children. Bless your children, your sons and daughters, so they can experience your love, Father's love, so they can celebrate this life in Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.